So today is the turn of the mocha pot. Not just one mocha pot, but because we are in London, I have three mocha pots. Like London buses, they sometimes come three at a time. But like three at a time, you may say, why on earth does the internet need a, another mocha pot video? And uh, I would tend to agree with you in one aspect. What I think is very correct, uh, being short and getting to the point, and then we'll break it down, is that you don't want to tamp the coffee. You want to fill it up to the valve or just below the valve. We're all good until there. But where the problem comes, and this is where I want to step in because I think making coffee should be simple. Where the differences come is then how you do it on the stove. And all of the Italians I know who make good coffee do it in the way that I do it. And all the YouTube videos on the internet of the modern way put hot water in. As I have a good problem with putting hot water in. One of them is that, sorry, making coffee should be simple, right? You should not have to wake up in the morning and get out a pair of scales and use basic maths in the morning. If that's your thing, honestly, knock yourself out. But for most of the people I've met and for a lot of coffee drinkers I met who have, you know, one of those mugs that say, don't speak, and maybe you can speak to me at the end of the first coffee. I'm more, maybe speak to me after three or four coffees. And so measuring stuff out in the morning, not good. And also burning my hands in the morning, not good. So I, I, I love mocha coffee, obviously. This is probably the, after the filter, this is the oldest um, coffee that, uh, or the coffee that I've probably used the most. And before the AeroPress and before the uh, NanoPress and Minipresso, NanoPresso and Minipresso, this was probably my travel coffee. Not because I used to take it with me, but because wherever, in many places that I went, there was one of these already there. And the good news about that is that it was all already kind of worn in. Now, I don't profess to understand the concept of wearing in, but it is definitely true, in my experience at least, that a mocha pot works better after it's been used a few times. I have absolutely no idea why. I must confess I haven't really investigated that much, but uh, the reason for that is that I really can't see any logic behind that. I also have another confession to make. So I lived in Spain when I was younger, great coffee. Came back in my years when you discover coffee, came back to England in the late nineties and the coffee experience, I, I cannot lie, was not that good. Um, I mean, it wasn't that good in central London where I can probably count the amount of bars that had an espresso machine in central London on my two hands. But by the time you went to somewhere like Oxford or Cambridge even, which you know are pretty cosmo cosmopolitan-ish cities with a big student life, you'd expect them to have coffee, but oh no. If you asked for a coffee, there would be a lot of consternation, a lot of consultation. The staff went, uh, you meant coffee, yes. I oh, will make him a Nescafe. No, no, I don't think he, he said, not, not instant, not Nescafe. Oh, you need coffee, coffee. Oh, I don't know if we have coffee, coffee. And this would go on until they would find something like this, which, 
has been in the back of my cupboard for I don't know how long and will undoubtedly taste of coffee and cupboard. Now, as much as I love the taste of coffee, I'm not a big fan of the taste of cupboard. I have to say that. Um, even my own cupboards, let alone somebody else's cupboard. And so they would produce a French press. They would do it very badly, of course, because this was pre-YouTube and we didn't have 7 billion videos on how to make a coffee, plus mine, which is going to be coming out as well. But in short, uh, it was difficult to get coffee. So this one I even took to, you know, I, I used to take everywhere. I mean, I, I even did this kind of business course for th three months down in Dorset in the old police training college. And uh, that's why this one is knackered because the cooking ladies used to hate me doing this so much. Sometimes I think they'll deliberately put it on full. And this is where we get to, right? So I uh, also lived a long time with Italians. I've been to Italy a lot and I've had very good mocha in Italy and the internet seems to do something very differently. Now I'm not against in any way shape or form going against tradition. There are a lot of traditions that are just steeped in silly old wives tales and they need challenging head-on like that. However some of them are there for a reason because they have experience and you really have to just like looking at videos on the internet or doing searches on the internet you have to take a balance, use them for yourself, see which one works the best for you. And so I thought I would do this one because I combine the what I think is the best of both worlds. What you need to be careful with this, with and the videos on the the better videos on YouTube so far are very good at this. You can make a very bitter, awful, over extracted coffee with a mocha pot if you're not careful. However, using hot water, I don't think is the way. I think the way is to use a very, very soft. Uh, fire directly under there if you have a small hob, which we'll get to in a second. Or if you don't have a very small one, give it a quick burst so you boil the water as quickly as possible. With the smallest ring, I'll bring that right down. As you can see, this one has um, seen the heavy burst quite a few times. So yeah, that's, uh, I think today we'll be using this one because that one Honestly, I mean, I've tried, this is stainless steel. I used to get stainless steel because I thought aluminium, um, you know, we were all told at one point that aluminium caused Alzheimer's and it was bad. And I don't like the corrosion that sometimes builds up in aluminium. Um, so yeah, I mean, this one I bought thinking it would be nice. Uh, it was when I couldn't find or moved or whatever. And I think these, these were the only reasonable ones in there. I don't really like this one. And the reason for that is that I make coffee with the pot open, and we'll show you why in a second. This one stays with the top open the best. This one stays quite well. This one, when you have it open, it's just, when you have it open, it's just so off balance. Um, it doesn't really work for me. Although it does look quite nice. Let's get to it. Um, one thing I will say is the grind. So I've got my good old Monmouth coffee, and generally what I have with this, even though it is an espresso maker or stovetop maker, and they have a stove top grind, I generally go a little bit coarser and uh, use the filter. And honestly, if I have traveled the world so much having this and uh, Illy, and honestly, it's very good. The, the results you can get with good old Lavazza or good old Illy, which is obviously, I know, double the price, but it is, I, I prefer it. But <laughs> there really is nothing wrong with good old Levatsa. Yeah, let's get, let's get some coffee. Now, if you do have one of these, use one of these, it will basically save you a lot of trouble. Um, but mine actually fits on there anyway, but I sometimes use this. And what we're aiming for is to get a the lowest heat possible. So this is the smallest ring. I'll bring that right down and let it slowly heat up the coffee in the center of the base and not heat the espresso on top. So I wanted to show you the coffee coming up um, in a way where well, I turned off the sound because the microphone was picking up too much sound of the gas. But as you can see, your mocha should come up quite slowly and quite thick at the beginning um, in this nice grainy artsy shot that I could watch for ages and you should see that it should slowly it should um, have enough oil in it and not be burnt that 
I don't know if you can pick up, but it's slowly um, moving with quite a lot of resistance around the bottom of the uh, mocha pot. And it's still, even though there's quite a lot of coffee there, it still hasn't filled up the pot. Now that's a sign that there's still a lot of oils and you haven't burnt uh, your espresso, which will not be the case if you heated it in the wrong way and all the coffee got too hot and the water coming out was too hot. So honestly, if you don't get uh, your mocha looking like this, then you know by all means try putting the hot water in first um, to get the results you want. But my surefire sign of the coffee uh, coming out well is, is when it, um, it slowly uh, comes out quite thick and the, there's a noticeable resistance of all those coffee oils. Now here you can see it's uh, slowly accelerating up and I kind of try and stop it here and I've left this uh, to prove another point of uh, how you should sort of slow the acceleration. Um, if you look here, you can see, especially if you're looking on a big screen, you'll see a lot of uh, bokeh around the surface of nice clear reflections and they will change to a different colour shortly. But I mean, honestly, the, the, the interesting thing of a mocha pot is that you can kind of leave this to bubble and most of the time it will taste okay and you will get a slightly weaker coffee, i.e. you will get something more like a lungo than an espresso, which some people like and some people don't. Honestly, um, play around with this, but I'm going to show you how, when you've worked out how you want to play with this, uh, how to stop it. Now, some people like it like this. I don't like it personally like this. You can see the Kramer is starting to separate and you can see some colour reflections of the oils, which means it's getting a bit past it. And I would personally stop it earlier. So I wanted to add another addition to... Um, one thing you need to do with the coffee is, uh, quite rightly, as I say on the um, various YouTube how-to videos on mocha pots is that you need to cool down the coffee very quickly. Now, a lot of them say to use, instead of the heat sink, which I'm going to show you shortly, they say, for example, to um, run it under the hot tap. Now, I don't know if you've ever run a hexagonal, pentagonal, or other angled shape with a rounded internal, um, but uh, th through huge heat differences, but it I can tell you it really isn't very good for the structure and proof of that was when I was very young one of the most scary moments was a house in the middle of the country being woken up at um, the early hours of the morning with the sound of glass breaking uh, every few minutes and uh, even the German shepherd dog would not go down the stairs to see what it was. It turned out to be some glasses which were shaped exactly like the mocha pot, round on the inside, um, angled on the outside and taking them from the hot dishwasher and putting them onto a cold stone shelf basically meant they cooled at a way in which the they basically popped one by one. So I wouldn't recommend running your mock pot under the tap, but I would recommend putting it onto a surface. Now, obviously, this is probably one of the best surfaces you've got. I do have a very nice copper, which is better, with graphene um, inlays from uh, which have been the crystals of the graphene had been grown in that direction, which is amazing. But as usual, when you try and do these videos, I cannot find it, but I will dig that out. Right, so my mocha has started accelerating. So I'm gonna turn off the gas. I'm going to let the heat gently pull through the last bits of acceleration that I want. And I'm gonna show you how quickly I halt it, alter, halt not alter, or halter, but halt the uh, acceleration and flow through. So finally, the most important part of a coffee is how you make it. Now, one difference I do with a mocha pot is I pour the milk first. And the reason being, as I showed you before, the strength of the mocha can vary quite uh, in quite a lot, depending on whether you let the water bubble through gently or not. And the strength uh, can vary quite a lot, and this is an indication of if you've got it right or not, but also you can make it as strong or as weak as you like. 
and you end up with this. So I hope you like this. If you do, please subscribe and uh, hit the like button and uh, you'll get some more of these.